You can't touch this. You can't touch this. into the house, I turned on the lights, at first I thought something was wrong because I called Miss Edna's name and she did not answer me. Edna? Edna? Are you there? So I turned on the lights and I ran inside and I saw her lying there on the floor with a pool of blood around her head. I wanted to make sure that she was okay, but I knew that she wasn't. Edna, Edna, are you okay? Hello, 911. John, can you yeah. answer the question? Huh? So what was the question to you? What were you doing the day that she was murdered? Oh, well, I was, you know, I was just at my crib and I was catching some Z's, you know? Yo, it's my jam! Sorry man, I gotta take this. Yo, G, what's up? Well, uh, yeah, about those smoke detectors. You see, uh, I, I, I take them apart so uh, I can repair my computers a bit easier and, and also cheaper. Because, you see, all those tiny little chips are really expensive if you buy them wholesale. Mary's financial state was constantly in flux. She had taken several loans to stay in college. I believe she would have done anything to obtain the money. After careful, ref after careful analysis of all of the data from the, of the beverage taken from the crime scene, and from the sample beverage taken from each suspect's house, we have discovered that Mary's caffeine-free Diet Pepsi matched the beverage found at the crime scene most. When we analyzed the ink found in the pen taken from Mary's house, and we did ink chromatography with alcohol and water, we found out that the ink more closely matched Mary's ink as the stuff written at the crime scene. So, in, in conclusion, Mary wrote the letter to Aunt Edna that was ripped in half, found on the mantle. a mean old woman. She was always so mad at the world. My parents made me promise before they died that I would visit her. I really don't like it though. She's, oh, she's just so mean. What were you doing that day? I was on campus doing research in my lab. I was alone all day. LIES! You weren't really in your lab that day, Mary. What happened? Where were you? Of course I wasn't in my lab that day. I hated that woman. She was a mean old hag who didn't care about anyone. She had all of this money and wouldn't share it with anybody. And I needed that money. I have loans to pay off. I have a ton of money that I owe. Well, I 
I stole some radioactive americium from Irwin, and I drugged her coffee with that, as well as some aspirin, hoping that it would kill her. I noticed that the drugs weren't taking effect soon enough, and she began reaching for the phone. But I didn't want that to happen, I knew I had to stop her. So I grabbed the candlestick that was on the counter and hit her over the head. Well, I wrote the letter in the hopes that I wouldn't have to end up killing her. But it didn't turn out that way. She was just so stingy that she wouldn't give us any money. Too bad now. <laughs> How is that gonna apply the documentary? Uh, bloopers. Bloopers? Bloopers? Uh, bloopers. Bloopers? Bloopers? Yo, Vanilla, kick it one time, boy! Yo, VIP! Let's kick it! And listen, I sit back with my brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly, flow like a harpoon daily and nightly. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you can even cut cookies with this nice candle holder. You can even kill people with it. You can even fix refrigerators. And it's microwave safe. So, um, Allison's car just slipped down Spencer's driveway, and there she is. I refuse to do this! Uh, Don't be saying that. <laughs> Take 17. Oh! Done <laughs> Mr. Dexheimer secretly. All day. You get so much good stuff. <laughs> What exactly are you doing, Justin? You're making like a home video. It's gonna be so lame. No, trust me. I'm gonna like edit every clip and it's gonna be so good. <laughs> yeah. It is. Whatever you say. It is. And it's gonna go with like me. I, I will put it on YouTube. No. We should. Allison, what do you think about that? About being on YouTube? Yeah. I think it's pretty awesome.